Hey class, so here I am to record another video for you, uh, this time on the workshop problem number three. So this is a tricky one for sure. Um, there's not a ton of information given, right? We're told that there's a bullet that's being shot from the top of one building. Maybe there's a sniper or something. Shot perfectly horizontal um, at a speed of 340 meters per second, and the trajectory of the bullet can be seen here. All right, so it's being launched here, and then gravity, even though it's shot horizontally, is going to pull it down. It's going to enter a window. Luckily, no one doesn't hit anybody, we're going to say. And it impacts the back wall at the location shown, which I didn't track too very well. So it's... Oh, that was even further away. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, it's going to fly through. Okay. And it's, again, going to leave here, go down through the hole, and impact the back wall. All right, so that's the trajectory. Um, and the way that we figure this out and the things we're doing, we're going to act like we're crime scene investigators, right? Ballistics tells us that the initial velocity of the gun is 340 meters per second. Looking at the uh, room where the bullet was found, we see, all right, it entered the window half a meter up off of the floor or, or some arbitrary location we're going to call the bottom, probably... A half, well, a half a meter above where it impacted the wall, really, is the best way to think of it. And the distance from the wall to the glass where the bullet hole was is shown as 6.9 meters. All right, so during that little distance in the room, we know it traveled vertically a half a meter and horizontally 6.9 meters. And so what we're trying to figure out then is where did the shooter fire from, all right? How far away must the shooter have been? and how high above. That way we can figure out which building nearby the shooter likely shot from to try to capture the bad guy. All right? So that's what we're trying to figure out. We're helping out the police using our physics knowledge and physics fun. Okay? So in doing this, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be tricky. Let's think of three locations. All right? That's how I'm going to break this down. So I'm going to call an initial location. I'll call point zero which is what we're trying to find the location of where the bullet is launched from. Point one, I'm going to call over here where we enter the window, break through the wall, so that's this location here. And then point two, I'm going to refer to as its final resting location, stuck into the wall after going through the window. All right, so let's look at each of these locations and what we know about them. So we got point zero. What do we know about point zero? Well, our initial X location, I'm going to call 0. My initial Y location is the height H that we're solving for, because that's relative to the ground where we started. All right. Our initial velocity in the X direction we're given is 340 meters per second. Our initial velocity in the Y, since we're told it is likely launched horizontally, is 0 meters per second. Okay, And we know for the whole thing, about acceleration, right? For the whole thing, we got acceleration in the x equal to zero because we're ignoring air resistance, and acceleration in the y equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's point one. Now we'll go to point, or excuse me, point zero. Then we'll do point one. So at point one, when it enters the wall, our x distance, x1, we'll call it, is the location or distance D that we're going to solve for that we don't know. Our Y1 is half a meter above the ground. And then our VX at point 1 is still the same, 340 meters per second. And our VY at point 1, we do not know. Okay, sounds good. Um, also the time that has transpired till point one is also an unknown. All right, cool. Now what about point two? What do we know about point two? Well, the x point two, the final distance it's traveled, well, that's going to be the total distance, so that's d plus 6.9 meters. All right, y2, we finally reached the ground, or the bottom of where we defined our zero. So just so you know, in case you're curious or confused, about the axes, right? The way I'm defining this is I'm calling this here my zero in the x and here my zero y or 
really that's 0x and 0y backwards anyway. So this is my x-axis and my y-axis, okay? Cool. All right, so continuing on with our variables, our v of x at 2, again, the moment right before it impacts into the wall, 340 meters per second, and the velocity of y at point 2, we don't know, and the time it takes to get to point 2, also unknown. Oh, boy, howdy. Okay, so I got uh, three minutes, four, five minutes into my video and uh, haven't solved for a single thing. Hmm. All right, so what are we trying to determine here? We need to find those two distances. But the problem is, if we try to find those two distances, um, really looking at the time from, or the segment from point zero to point one, so if we look at zero to one, the first window, which is where the H and the D are mostly transpired, we don't really know anything about that segment, right? We don't know about the time that transpires there. We don't know about final velocities. We really have lots of question marks about that segment. So in order to solve for anything, and you can try some equations and you'll see, but in order to solve for anything, we actually have to look at the second portion of the travel first. So I'm going to look at the transpiring distance from point one to point two first. So I'm going to attempt to determine really something that can help me find those distances and heights. So what I'm going to try to look for is what is my velocity and time at this first segment. Eventually those will help me find D and H a little better since H is over here and D is here. And in order to do that, I'm going to see what needs to be done. Likely I'm going to have to find this time first. Okay, because as I look, if I start chugging through my equations of motion, really the first one that's going to enable me to solve for anything is using our second equation of motion, x final equals x initial plus v initial x times time plus one half acceleration in the x times time squared. Again, looking from points one to two. So this is zero acceleration. All right, so what I have is that my x final, which we've defined as being d plus 6.9, because that's really d2, equals my x initial, which is x1, so that's d, plus my v initial x times t, which we don't know. So I can solve, and what I would find here scroll down to give me some room. As I solve is I should find my d's will end up canceling out with one another so my time just ends up being equal to 6.9 meters divided by my initial velocity of 340. That's a beautiful 4 isn't it? <laughs> Let's try that again. 340 meters per second and so the time, and this again is the time from point one to point two, so that's really what we're going to call T2. The time that you should find should be, I believe, 0 0.0203 seconds. So now that we have that, can we use that to figure out the velocity as it enters into the building through the window. So I'm trying to find the velocity here, the V1Y, because once I have that, it can enable me to figure some things out about this section where I can try to find H and D. So I'm going to scroll back down here and see if we can't find the velocity at point one. So to find that velocity, we're going to have to look at our y direction since it's the y velocity. So in the y direction, I'm going to use the same equation of motion here, but again, we're looking at y2, so I'm going to write it with the proper subscripts this time. y2 is equal to my initial position, which is y1, plus v initial, which is v at, at position 1 times y times t, plus 1 half my acceleration in the y, which is gravity, negative 9.8 times t squared. All right, so for the sake of time, I'm going to skip over the algebra steps, but in this equation, we know everything. We know y2, we know y1, we know a. We've now found the time, and so you can solve for 
the V1, and so what you should find is V1y is equal to, it's moving down, so it's a negative value, 24.53 meters per second. All right, so once we have that, now let's see if we can move back to looking at the transpiring uh, movement between points 0 and 1 to try to solve for the height and the distance. So if you want to find the height, well, that requires the y position. If you want the distance, that requires the x position. The problem is, I know the x equation depends upon time, this time t1 here. And I don't know the x distance or the time. For the y distance, I don't know the time either or the height. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first find the time and then use that to find the height and the distance. You could find the y distance, I guess, probably using um, the equation of motion that's independent of time. That's fine. But first you need the time. So to find the time, since I know my now, I now, know my now, I now know my v initial y and my v final y, so I'm going to use those to find time. So we know that v final, which in this case is v at 1, y equals v initial y plus acceleration times time. And so you should be able to f use that to solve for time. So you should get a number for time, t equals some number. I'm going to let you guys do that. Oh, that's not box worthy. We weren't asked for that. I'll just take off part of the box. Okay. And then, that's close. Um, and then once you have that, you can use your x equation to solve for d and the h equation whoop, the h equation to solve for the height h. Alright, so I'm not going to do these last couple steps because I trust from here you guys can take it and then you'll be able to get a box worthy. Well, let's make it a double box worthy, two different colors. Boy, howdy. Alright, cool. Anyway, hope that helps. Let me know if you have any additional questions and you guys have a great weekend. Good luck with your studying. Sorry, 